All right, so our pie chart here is displaying um, the relative fraction of the total amount of crime in the United States in 2014 that was violent. So only 12% of all crime is violent. Well, only. I ideally, it would be 0%, but ideally, there would also be no crime. But this is the world we're in. Um, so what we also want to know is how that might have changed over the course of time. So if we're thinking of our two main questions we're trying to address, um, how did crime increase or decrease over the course of time in the United States? And then did violent crime increase or decrease in the United States? This pie chart is telling us the fraction of crime in 2014 that's violent. It's not giving us a comparison over the course of time. So a pie chart is a good comparison for one variable, but what we actually want to assess is the relationship between two variables, year and crime. So what if I just use multiple pie charts? So I say, okay, I've got a pie chart for 2014, and let's compare that to a pie chart for another year. Uh, crime was really high in 1990, so let me look at the pie chart for 1990 and 2014 and understand how well that communicates um, the potential change in the amount of violent crime. Well, there are several kind of complications with using pie charts for this kind of comparison. Um, so whenever we've got one pie chart, it's going to be a, an effective illustration for the part to whole within that given circle. But when we're comparing two pie charts to one another, um, our eye and our mind is going to struggle to visually compare the relative sizes of pie slices from one pie to the next. And so when you're looking at the pie in 1990, um, we can maybe clearly see that this uh, larceny theft slice is smaller in 1990 than it is in 2014. Uh, and then this particular slice here, um, maybe that's a little smaller. We can tell it's smaller because of the numbers, but if we didn't have the numbers, it would be harder to see. Um, these slices are pretty similar, but um, given the visual distance between them, we'd have to look back and forth pretty closely to try to understand um, what the differences in the visual sizes of those slices might be. The other thing is that we're looking at two part to whole relationships within each given year, but that's not necessarily the comparison that we want to make. What we really want to know is how did the amount of violent crime or maybe the violent crime rate, how is that changing over the course of time? And this is telling us the fraction of violent crime in a year, but we actually want to know uh, relative to all crime, but we actually want to know the violent crime rate, so the amount of crimes. So if there's a lot more crime in this year, even if the fraction of violent crime is smaller, the amount of violent crime might still be bigger than it was in 2014. Uh, and so we need to think a little bit harder about what is a part to whole comparison um, versus what is a comparison of amounts between different categories. So let's talk through a few of these examples to try to think through this part to whole relationship. So the first example here, we've got on the UC Davis campus, how many males are social science majors? How many uh, females are social science majors? So is this a part to whole relationship? Um, yes. So what we've got here is the whole, which is social science majors, and then the parts would be males and females. And so we could represent this with a pie chart where the whole pie is social science majors, and then the slices of the pies are males and female students. Um, what about number two? Is this a part to whole relationship? So how many males are in the College of Engineering, College of Letters and Sciences, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, and the College of Biological Sciences? So is this part to whole? What would the whole be? Well, the whole in this case is males, males at UC Davis. So we could have a pie chart where the whole pie is representing male students at UC Davis, and then the parts or the slices of that pie are College of Engineering, College of Letters and Sciences, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, College of Biological Sciences. So yes, this would be uh, a part to whole relationship. Number three, how many children live in poverty in the USA in 2014? How many children in poverty live in the USA in 2015? Is this a part to whole relationship? No. So this is not because what would the whole be in this case? Would the whole be all children, but would it be all children in which year? Um, and so that's, there's not a clear part to whole. What we were actually comparing is an amount. Um, we're comparing an amount of, or a number of children in poverty in 2014 to a number of children in poverty in 2015. 
And so this would be like the um, similar setup where we would actually have to use two pie charts. Uh, if we were thinking about a part to whole, it could be um, all children and then the parts are in poverty and not. But then we've got two different years that we're comparing also, 2014, 2015. So it'd be two pie charts. Um, and so this isn't really a part to whole. The last one of um, the um, psychology majors, uh, or is that psychology or political science? PSC. Hmm. Unclear. Of the PSC majors, what is the grade distribution in um, Division of Social Sciences 12Y? So um, this would be a part to whole again. So now we could think of a pie chart for this where um, the whole pie is all of the PSC students in um, 12Y, and then the parts are the grades. So we'd have a slice for um, A's, a slice for B's, a slice for C's, um, and we wouldn't need any other slices because you're all working very hard and you're going to do very well in this class. Um, but that would be a part to whole, where the parts are the different grades that the students are getting, and the whole is the set of the PSC majors in the class. Uh, and so thinking through this, uh, a pie chart isn't ideal for this comparison because we're not really thinking of part to whole as the key to our question, um, the fraction of all crime in a year that's violent. We're actually thinking about comparing the amount of crime um, that's violent across the different years. So, okay, what um, is an example where we can see all of these potential problems coming together? Um, there are a lot of bad visualizations out there because not enough people take this very important class. Uh, and so this is an unfortunate visualization for several reasons that we've just talked about. Um, and the example is, dear reader, um, are you close to someone of the opposite sex? Every week the magazine publishes the results of a study conducted online in January by the New York Times' research and analytics department, reflecting the opinions of 3,244 subscribers who chose to participate. This week's question, do you have a friend of the opposite sex you could confide in? And so this is a part to whole relationship. The whole is all of the subscribers that chose to participate. The parts are the people that said yes or no to this question. But instead of using a pie chart, they are visualizing um, the yeses and the noes with different bubbles. And because the question is about gender, they're using pink and blue. But the problem here is that this looks like um, this is the percentage of people who said no, or the percentage of women who said no because of the pink and then the percentage of um, people who said yes, which is men, um, because it's blue. So it looks like they're giving a comparison between gender, and because the blue bubble is bigger, it looks like maybe more men are saying that they do than women. Um, but actually, gender is not a variable in this um, comparison. There's only one variable, it's yes or no, and they're not breaking it out by men and women. Um, and so color coding these things as pink and blue is really misleading because it makes it think, makes you think as the reader that you've got a comparison by gender here. Um, the other problem is that um, the relative sizes of these yes and no's, so we've got 65% saying yes, so we expect this bubble to be bigger than the no's, which is only 35%. Um, but if we actually calculate the area of this, if we measure the kind of diameter of that circle right there, and then we use the formula for calculating area. Um, this bubble is actually 2.4 times larger than this bubble right here in terms of the area. But if we compare the fraction of 65% to 35%, this is only 1.8 times bigger. So the scale of the bubbles is not correct. Um, and the scale of the bubbles is just hard for us to determine anyway. Uh, and so this is uh, not an ideal visualization for a lot of reasons. Um, and the coloring and the use of um, the relative sizes of these things um, make you think that it's providing comparisons that it's actually not and um, distort the scale of the comparison. So all of these are things that we would like to avoid. What if I want to use something other than the pie chart um, to visualize violent crime over the course of time? Well, if I wanted to use something other than a pie chart, I could use uh, the 100% stacked column chart. And so this is much easier to compare over the course of time. So from one year to the next, instead of having a pie chart for every single year, I've just got a column and then I've color coded. So this is um, the percent of all crime in a year that's violent crime. 
and this is the percent of all crime in a year that's um, property crime in the light blue. And compared to using um, areas and, and angles of slices from one year to the next, I can much more easily compare the heights of these dark blue bars to understand um, differences over time in the percent of crime that's violent. Um, but again, this is making a part to whole comparison. So here it looks like violent crime is actually increasing over the course of time, but it's increasing as a fraction of total crime. It's not necessarily increasing in terms of an actual amount of violent crime. So in 2014, um, violent crime as a percent of all crime was higher than in earlier years, but the total amount of crime in 2014 was lower than in earlier years. Um, and so this visualization, this part to whole, is not conveying the story that I want to convey. So what do I do? I move away from a part to whole. I move away from the 100% stacked chart. And I just used a stacked column chart. And so now I'm just presenting where the height of the bar, um, this top up here is the total amount of uh, crime per 100,000 people. So I'm using rates, which adjust for population size, and I'm color coding. So the top of the dark blue bar is the violent crime rate in a given year. And then the top of this bar up here is the total amount of crime. So this is not um, the amount of property crimes in a year. This is total crime. So it's this height for property crime plus this height for violent crime. And by putting violent crime on the bottom, it's really easy for me to just look across and compare how did the amount of violent crime change over the course of time. And then looking at the very top of the chart, I can more easily see how did the amount of property and violent crime together, so total crime, change over the course of time. Uh, and so I'm moving away from part to whole, and now I'm conveying amounts, and I'm conveying the amounts for both total crime and violent crime. All right, so what else can I do? What other rules have we discussed in this lecture um, that might help me visualize this in a more impactful and clear way? Um, one thing was that when we had those 3D charts, um, all of these gaps between the bars were really distracting. And so we changed that into a line chart. So what can I do here? Um, if I did a line chart, it might be a little bit um, less clear because then I would have two lines, but it's not clear that it's a, a stacked um, thing. So this might look like the line for just property crime. This might look like the line um, for violent crime not being included in the total crime rate. Um, and so what I could do is a stacked area chart. Uh, and so here I've just got the violent crime again, but you can imagine that we just kind of connected the tops of all of the different dark blue bars and filled them in. And then the same thing um, for the top part here. We connected the tops of all the lines and filled them in. And so this total height up here is again communicating just the total crime rate in that given year. Um, the total height down here is communicating just um, the total amount of violent crime rate in any given year. Uh, and then the color coding is helping us distinguish, okay, this is violent crime down at the bottom. This is property crime up here at the top. Uh, one last thing that we could do is just simplify and direct the viewer's attention to um, violent crime rates and ignore property crime. Um, so the first question was, did crime overall increase or decrease over time? The second question was, um, did violent crime increase or decrease over the course of time? Uh, then maybe I just don't need to include property crime, uh, in which case I can eliminate this top area and I can get a simple line chart going. So I take out that top area, I'm left with the bottom dark blue area, and then if there's only one area, why color code? So I can just take out all of that shading, replace it with a, a solid blue line, and without all of this extra crime um, rate for the property crimes up here, which is unnecessary information, I can zoom in more. So instead of having the scale go up to 6,000 per 100,000 people, I can have the scale be much smaller, and that allows me to much more clearly visualize um, what the scale of this trend is right here. So I can tell that this decreased, but it looks like kind of a shallow and, and maybe not um, a very kind of meaningful or dramatic decrease because the scale is so wide that we're kind of zoomed out from the violent crime at the bottom. 
And so when I um, am including just the violent crime rates, I can zoom in a lot more and I can see the peak in the early 90s was up here at about 750 violent crimes per 100,000 people. And then there was a huge drop throughout the 1990s. Uh, and then we've had a continued drop since then. And so for those New York Times articles showing those giant kind of dramatic red arrows going upward in terms of um, homicide rates and potentially other kinds of violent crimes, um, those increases, in, in particularly when you include the, the cities that didn't have big increases, lead to a very small blip when you add that additional year of data. It would only be a, a little tiny um, kind of like ski jump looking thing at the bottom of a giant mountain where it's been declining um, dramatically for decades and then there's a blip down here. Uh, and so this visualization helps give us that context for um, this decline. And so um, we see that crime has not increased over the course of time using a simple line chart for um, the total crime rate. And we see that the violent crime rate did not increase over time. Again, using a simple line chart that's just plotting the violent crime rate against time. Uh, and those two simple visualizations address these two questions very clearly. Um, they're not cluttered. They're not filled with distracting colors. Um, they don't include extraneous information. So our viewer's attention is directed to the comparisons that we want to convey which is this increase and decrease in crime over the course of time, and that's it.